Papa? Mama? Papa? Mama? Papa? Mama? Sister? Please be reasonable. I'm Wenya's father. I should take care of her. Where would I send her to? I don't care. It's not my problem. Send her to her mom's house. Can you house. keep it down? She's still sleeping. It's not like you don't know. Her mother's restaurant is very busy, and she has a sister. If I send over Wenya... How could she have the time? Besides, I was given custody of the kid, so I can't not take care of her. The kid, the kid, that's all you ever talk about. What about me, though? This is no way to live. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Take a little time off. If she doesn't leave, I will. It doesn't have to be like this. <laughs> Wenya. Wenya. <laughs> What's wrong? Hmm? Don't be scared. But I'm scared. Don't be scared. Dad's here. Dad, Auntie doesn't like me, does she? Are you gonna send me away again? Wenya, be good. It's just for a little bit. Then I'll come and bring you back, okay? Hmm? Good girl. Hello? Mr. Wong? 40 tables for the evening? What are you drawing? Sounds great. Don't worry, I'm it's not a, a problem. I'm drawing a family. Hmm. Here, okay. look. Got it. This See is you, you, this is mom, this is me, and this is dad. When you look, now our whole family is together. <laughs> Mr. Zhang, Wong booked Zing 40 Zing. tables now. I don't Can like the auntie it? at my dad's the health house. Bureau will She's come to mean. Do a spot check. I Make want sure to stay with clean. you and mommy here. Yeah, don't I want to live with you forever. Envelopes. We'll have them at our restaurant afterwards. Zing Zing, why is that that we have two Let's homes when other kids seem to only have one? Hmm. Mama said that we'll understand when we're older, okay? Hmm. All right. <laughs> Wen Jing, <laughs> did you take your medicine? Yes, Mom. Wenya. Mama, look. Wow, this is great. Wenya, Mommy's going to be really busy for a few days. So you're going to go to your uncle's house and play with Da Peng, okay? I don't want to. Wenya, come. Mama will bring you your favorite art supplies to play with. And you'll get yummy treats. I'll pick you up in a few days. No, I don't want to play with my cousin Tapang. I want to be here with you and sister. Wenya, hey, be good, okay? Your uncle is downstairs waiting, huh? Come. Wenya, you said your mom was coming today, so why didn't she pick you up yet? My mom is busy. She'll come when it starts. Why are you always staying at my house? Why don't you go back to your own house? Da Pong, time for dinner. Okay.
Anything fun happen at school? We had a race and I came in first. Really? Come on, That's son. wonderful. Eat up. It's fish. Wow. Yay. Yeah. Depong, Mama made your favorite today. Yeah. Looks good. Here, have some fish. This is your favorite, isn't it? Yeah. You like it? Huh. Yeah, Mom. Yeah. Have some more Here. and you'll grow big and strong, okay? Mm hmm. Wenya, which one do you want? I'll get you any snack you want. I don't want... I don't want any of these snacks. I just want to be with you. Listen now. Be good and do what you're told. I'll be back in a few days. Come on, Wenya. Jen, New Year's is soon. You're not working over the holiday, are you? Yes. I'll have to leave her here a few more days. I'll come back New Year's Eve. That's fine. Do what you need to do. Open the door. Wow! Wenya, you came! Mom bought us a bunch of pretty clothes. Let's go look! Wenya, say hi to your uncle. Hello. It's so nice. You look like a beautiful princess. <laughs> Xing Xing, can you help me put this on? Yeah. That bowl's so pretty. Let's go How show much mom. Did you spend huh? on those two kids. It's New Year's, and you brought the younger one here too. You're out of line. We're the Wongs. We're not the Zhongs. If you don't get that brat out of here today, forget about New Year's plans. I am her mom. I brought her here for New Year's. What's the problem? Don't you have humanity? How has she ever gotten in your way? I can't take this anymore! I'm not going to raise someone else's kid. If you don't get her out of here, then I will! What are you doing? Ugh. Get out! Get back! Oh, Mom! Stop it! You really thought Stop. I wouldn't hit you? Huh? How can I raise another man's child? Money doesn't grow on trees. Don't cry, Wenya. I don't want to see them anymore. Uncle just had too much to drink. Wenjing, take your sister to Dad's house. I'll pick you up after the new year. Huh? Honey, wait till your uncle comes. Then we'll eat together, huh? Yeah. Uncle's back. Okay, Jing Jing. Go to your sister's room. Listen, I can explain. You said she would spend New Year at her mom's place. You're just trying to start something. Why do you do this to me? Hang on. It's late. It's New Year's. 
Since they're here, we'll just leave them here at home. Her own mother doesn't want her. Why do I have to let her in? Will you let me celebrate or what? Fine, just please. It's New Year's. Listen, this is my house. Why did you have to come here? This is my dad's house. It's my home too. It's not your home. No one wants you. That's not true. Yes, it is. It's not. You're nobody. I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you Winnie, are. Don't fight. Stop. Leave me alone. Stop. Mm. Get off Stop. me. Get off me. Stop. What's wrong? Mom, they hit me. Are you okay? It's my home too. It's okay. You're my good girl. Jing Jingguo, listen to me. I'm leaving if she stays here. It's me or her. Figure it out. Fine, fine. Wenjing, listen to me. Take your sister to the old place tonight. And I'll be there later. Okay? Good. Picking up my tiny suitcase, I go to a strange place. Daddy is inside, but Mama is outside. Picking up my tiny suitcase, I go to a home I once knew. I'm home. Sis, come on. Don't tell me to date someone. Since Chien and I divorced, things have been good. I'm getting along better with Wenya now, anyway. When she was young, I really wronged her. I didn't take good care of her. She's about to take her college entrance exams. And I want to give her a good, positive environment. Let's not think about anything else right now. Hey, it should be coming home soon. I'm gonna hang up. Bye. Bye bye. Dad, I'm home. There you are. Mm. Hurry up and get changed. There you go. You've been gone a month. You look thinner. Exams are coming up. I know you've been studying. So I tried to cook some brain food. Look, it's your favorite, sweet and sour. Wow. Eat up. Dad, here, you have some too. Mm, thanks. You're looking kind of pale. You should take care of yourself. <laughs> I'm fine. Mm.
You know my greatest wish? It's for you to get into a good college, and so you can get a good job in the future. Then I'll stop worrying. Dad, don't worry. I won't disappoint you. I will be so successful in my career, just like you. Good. Hey, try this one. Mm. By the way, hmm? it's been a while since I've seen Mom, so I want to see her and my sister. Dad, what's wrong? Your mother's in the hospital. Huh? We didn't tell you because we didn't want it to affect your studies. Hey, Wenya, how's mom? The doctor said she had a brain hemorrhage. We're lucky she got here soon. If they caught it later, she might not be here. Listen, she's really lucky to be alive. Hey, Jing, where's our stepfather? Don't talk about him. He's the reason your mother is in here. What? Wait, tell me what happened. He brought some floozy back home with him and your huh? mom ran into them. How could she not be angry with him? Not to mention, even though he knows your mom is here, not only does he not care, he seized all the family's assets. That's too much. I'm gonna settle Wenya, this. Wait. Wenya, wait! The most important thing now is making sure mom gets better. Also, Promise me you won't mention it in front of her. She can't get agitated right now. Yeah, helping your mom is more important. Wenxing, Wenya, there's some things I need to do. Since you're here to help your mom out, I'll be heading home now. Hey, you don't look well. I won't live at the school anymore. I'll help you care for mom. Tao Huijin's family. Your balance requires another payment. You need to pay as soon as possible, or we'll have to stop treating your mother.
Why are you here? This is my mother's house, so I... Who is it? It's for you. Oh. Oh, Wenya. What are you doing here? My mom's been in the hospital, but you don't seem to care. My dad's covered the medical bills, but we're running out of money. Can you help with medical expenses? Wenya, don't you understand? The restaurant has been losing money for years. There's a ton of debts to pay. I don't have any money right now. How about this? When I get some money, I'll send it over to you. When my mom managed it, business was really good. But now when she needs money, you can't just do nothing. At least, get my mom's money to pay for these bills. You think I have money? I don't have any to give you. You lived with my mom all those years. How could you be like this? Fine. Forget it. I'm going to divorce her anyway. So don't come here again. Go. Get out. My mom helped you. Get out. How could you? Go. How can you do this? Don't you have a conscience? Hey, Dad. Have some milk. Your mother will get out soon. But your stepfather has taken the house. She doesn't have anywhere to go. Talk it over with her. And see if she'll move in here with us. You know how Mom can be. She has a lot of pride. In this situation, I don't think she would want to come here. My sister and I talked about it. We want to rent a place. Okay. In the next few days, I'll help you find a place. Finish your homework and go to bed. Mm -hmm. Mom, time for your medicine. Just set it down. I'll take it later. Wenya, sit down. I have something to say. Wenya, you've grown up and you're independent. One day, if I'm not here anymore, you need to take care of yourself. Mom, what, what are you talking about? Listen to me. Your sister's health is bad. She can't work like you. So take good care of her. Then I won't worry. Ma, what does that mean? You're getting better every day. You're about to go to college, and I wanted more money to send you abroad somewhere good. Not only can I not take care of either of you, I've become a burden on you. Ma, that isn't true. Listen, 
My sister and I are grown up. So no matter how hard things get, I know we can all get through it. Don't worry so much, Mom. Ma, just try to sleep. Take your mind off it. Miss Zhang! Miss Zhang, I have a question about this equation. Ah, but look, it's actually pretty I'm simple. I'm sorry, one second. Sure. Hey, sis, what's up? Dad's in the hospital. They ran some tests and it's late stage liver cancer. It's what? Liver cancer? Dad. When you... You came. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. It's no big deal. Just focus on school. Dad, don't worry. I'm studying every day. I'll definitely go to college.
I never imagined that Jingguo would get cancer. That household's falling apart. I was hoping to borrow more money and expand the factory. But I guess I can't now. You still want to borrow money from him? We still haven't paid back any of the money we already borrowed. Wenya's mother is bedridden, and their father is like this now. They're more in need of money. I think we should pay them back. We can't. The factory's barely made any money back yet. We need to pay the staff. Not to mention, some goes to officials. Pay them back. Uncle! Aunt! Hey, Wenya. Uncle, have you been busy? Since both my parents are sick, and I'm studying for exams, and my sister can't take care of both of them, can you help look after my dad a bit? Well, I... Wenya, these last few years we've been so busy with our business. We're trying to expand the factory. There's no way your uncle could spend time away. Wenya, we're extremely busy. We need to go now, okay? Come, let's go. Don't go. Hello? Auntie, this is Wenya. I'm taking the college entrance exam soon. Is there any way you can help look after Dad? Oh, uh, well, I would, but I really can't take time off from work right now. I hope you understand. Oh, okay. Michelle? Hey, Wenya. I need to take a week off. Is there a reason you need so much time? My dad is in the hospital, and he needs a lot of tests in the next few days. Wenya, there's only three months until exams. It's an important time, but it's your dad. You can figure it out. Remember to study. Mm-hmm. I will. Thank you, Michelle. Hmm. <sighs> Wenya is such a good kid. She's yeah. smart, has good grades, and I know she can get into a good college. It's a shame her situation is so unfortunate. Her mom is bedridden, and Dad's in the hospital. <sighs> that poor kid. Wenya really has a hard life. If this keeps up, her schoolwork will suffer. It would be a shame if she couldn't go to a good college. Ms. Xiao? Listen, don't take it to heart. They say that life is full of ups and downs, and no one has a life that is all smooth sailing. No one knows what setbacks they'll encounter or what difficulties they will face. Don't you think so? Hey, you're home. Look who's here. Ah, hi, Aunt Chang. Aunt Lee. Oh, Wenya, ah, you're back. Wenya. What brings you here? How are you? Are you tired? Come have a seat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just bought some fruit. I'll go prepare it for us. Okay. We can do this in the living room. Sis, let me help. Mm -hmm. Jingming, Li Ji, we've been friends all these years. You know me well. I'm so competitive. No matter what I do, I never want to get left behind. These years, in order to make people think well of me, I focused all my energy on business. 
but I just never thought things would be like this. Now, I have nothing. I'm sick. And I'm a burden on my children. Honestly, if it weren't for my kids, I'd have nothing to live for. Hui Chen, don't be like this. I understand what you're going through. Anyone in your shoes would be upset. A few years ago, I worked night and day to earn enough for my son to go to school, but I ruined my health. My son didn't excel. He didn't get in college, and he gambled. He gambled away all our money and got into fights with people, spent three years in jail. I was just like how you are. I was always crying and felt hope was gone. I wondered, why did I have such a worthless son? He brought me only humiliation. I just felt like I couldn't go on. Auntie, why is life always so full of suffering? Life would be a lot better without pain. At the time, I thought the same thing. Why are people's lives so painful? Why can't we escape from all the suffering? When I started to believe and understand the truth of God's words, I started to learn the truth. Mankind is corrupt, and there's meaning to all of our suffering. You believe in God? Mm. In God? During my very worst times, a friend of mine shared the gospel. He said, God created mankind. God rules over our destiny. Where we come from, where we go, our whole lives are arranged by God. If we believe in God, we'll understand these things about human life. It doesn't matter what difficulties we have, setbacks, or failures in our lives. It's all in God's will. We believe in God and have undergone difficulties. It allows us to see the truth and God's actions, gain God's care and protection, and walk the proper path. As long as we seek the truth and pray, rely on God in all things, God will protect us, care for us. He will give us a way out and resolve all our problems. My friend bore witness to the words and work of God in the last days and gave me a book of God's words. The Word appears in the flesh. Ever since then, I've read God's words every day and prayed to Him. I shared all of my difficulties with God, and I met brothers and sisters, had fellowship. By that time, I understood. God does carry in His hands the fate of mankind, rule over us, and arrange people's whole lives. We all live with pain every day because Satan has corrupted us. Humans turned their back on God, and we lost his care and protection, falling under Satan's domain. Satan has fooled mankind. That's why our lives are tragedy. People live only for vanity, for fame and status. It's all Satan's affliction on mankind. Living like this, of course we're in pain. I finally see things clearly. Actually, God allows people to suffer so in order to show mankind how Satan corrupts and afflicts us. This is the only way we can hate and reject Satan and instead come pray to God, seek to live based on his words, cast off the shackles of sin and gain God's salvation. This is God's will. All of this was my guidance from the words of God that made me understand the truth and truly know in my heart that God is love, and only God can save all mankind. While believing in God, I've seen His guidance and His protection and His salvation in many things. My heart is brighter. Believing in God is great and is really the right path in life. 
Almighty God's words very clearly explain the root of people's pain in life. Let's take a look at his words together. Then you'll see. That sounds great. Mm. Let's read together. Almighty God says, Adam and Eve, created by God in the beginning, were holy people. Which is to say, whilst in the Garden of Eden, they were holy, untainted with filth. They were also faithful to Jehovah and knew nothing of the betrayal of Jehovah. This is because they were without the disturbance of the influence of Satan, were without Satan's poison, and were the purest of all mankind. They lived in the Garden of Eden, undefiled by any filth, unpossessed by the flesh, and in reverence of Jehovah. Later, when they were tempted by Satan, they had the poison of the serpent and the desire to betray Jehovah, and they lived under the influence of Satan. His thoughts were filled with evil and filth, without good or holiness. Is this not Satan? Mankind has developed through tens of thousands of years of history to get to where they are today. However, the mankind of my original creation has long ago sunk into degeneracy. They have already ceased to be what I want, and thus humanity, as they appear in my eyes, no longer deserves the name of mankind. They are rather the scum of mankind that Satan has taken captive, the rotten walking corpses that Satan lives in and in which it is clothed. People do not in the least believe in my existence, nor do they welcome my coming. Satan corrupts people through the education and influence of the national, governments, and the famous and great. Their lies and nonsense have become man's life and nature. Everyone for himself and the devil take the hindmost is a well-known satanic saying that has been instilled into everyone and become the human life. There are some other words of life philosophy that are also like this. Satan educates people through each nation's fine traditional culture and causes humanity to fall into and be engulfed in an expansive abyss of destruction. And in the end, people are destroyed by God because they serve Satan and resist God. We should read another part. For many years, the thoughts that people have relied upon for their survival have been corroding their hearts, to the point that they have become treacherous, cowardly, and despicable. Not only do they lack willpower and resolve, but they have also become greedy, arrogant, and willful. They are utterly lacking any resolve that transcends the self. And even more, they don't have a bit of courage to shake off the strictures of these dark influences. People's thoughts and lives are rotten. Their perspectives on believing in God are still unbearably ugly. And even when people speak of their perspectives on belief in God, it is simply unbearable to hear. People are all cowardly, incompetent, despicable, as well as fragile. They do not feel disgust for the forces of darkness, and they do not feel love for the light and the truth. Instead, they do their utmost to expel them. From when man first had social sciences, the mind of man was occupied by science and knowledge. Then science and knowledge became tools for the ruling of mankind, and there was no longer sufficient room for man to worship God, and no more favorable conditions for the worship of God. The position of God sunk ever lower in the heart of man. A world in man's heart with no place for God is dark, empty, without hope. And so arose many social scientists, historians, and politicians to express theories of social science, the theory of human evolution, and other theories that contravene the truth that God created man to fill the heart and mind of man. 
And in this way, those who believe that God created everything become ever fewer, and those who believe in the theory of evolution become ever greater in number. More and more people treat records of the work of God and His words during the Old Testament age as myths and legends. In their hearts, people become indifferent to the dignity and greatness of God, to the tenet that God exists and holds dominion over all things. The survival of mankind and the fate of countries and nations are no longer important to them. Man lives in a hollow world only concerned with eating, drinking, and the pursuit of pleasure. Wenya, why don't you read next? Sure. Man walked through the ages with God, yet man knows not that God rules the fate of all things and living beings, or how God orchestrates and directs all things. This is something that has eluded man since time immemorial to the present day. As for the reason why, it is not because the ways of God are too elusive, or because the plan of God has yet to be realized, but because the heart and spirit of man are too distant from God. Therefore, even as man follows God, he unknowingly remains in the service of Satan. None actively seek out the footsteps or appearance of God, and none wish to exist in the care and keeping of God. Rather, they are willing to rely on the corrosion of Satan and the evil one in order to adapt to this world and to the rules of life the wicked mankind follows. At this point, the heart and spirit of man are sacrificed to Satan and become its sustenance. Moreover, the human heart and spirit become a place in which Satan can reside and a fitting playground for it. In this way, man unknowingly loses his understanding of the principles of being human and of the worth and purpose of human existence. The laws from God and the covenant between God and man gradually fade away in man's heart, and man no longer seeks or pays heed to God. As time passes, man no longer understands why God created man, nor does he understand the words that come from the mouth of God or realize all that is from God. Man begins to resist the laws and decrees from God. The heart and spirit of man become deadened. God loses the man of his original creation, and man loses the root of his beginning. This is the sorrow of this mankind. How do you feel after reading the words of Almighty God? These words are truly profound. I've never heard anything like this before. Please, tell us more. The reason that the world is so dark and evil, that humans are ever so corrupt, and that our lives are overflowing with pain, is directly related to mankind being so corrupted by Satan. Almighty God has clearly explained all of this. It is only after enduring such suffering that people are able to sense the darkness in the world, the corruption in mankind, and to realize that they need God's salvation. For thousands of years, Satan has used materialism, atheism, evolutionism, and other such fallacies to deceive and poison us. It has used demons and luminaries to plant all kinds of fallacies and lies in people's hearts, as in the sayings, all for themselves and the devil take the ends. Money makes the world go round. A man dies for money, a bird for food. One's destiny's in one's own hand. Knowledge can change your fate. Those who work with their minds govern those who work with their hands. There is no God within the world. There has never been any savior. Man can conquer nature and so on. People have mistaken these poisons from Satan as being the truth. They see them as wise proverbs, and they rely on them for guidance. They're all arrogant and self-important, 
They're self-assured and listen to no one. They're selfish and deceitful. They are full of lies. They cheat and they hurt one another. They don't confide in anyone or have any genuine relationships. People erect great walls between one another and are guarded with everyone. People just can't get along with others. If they aren't careful, they fear they'll make enemies. Wouldn't you say so yourselves? All you've said is true. No one has humanity. What problem does this speak to? That people have been corrupted and that their hearts are wicked. People seem to worship money and power. Being a whore isn't seen as shameful. No one cares about morality now. They wrestle each other over money, fame, and fortune, and scheme for status. They cheat each other. They slaughter each other. They stop at nothing to achieve their individual goals. They are capable of doing terrible things. There is no sin they wouldn't commit. Even between parents and children, husband and wife, between all there is cheating, exploitation, and there's betrayal. They are devoid of conscience. All they do is for their own personal benefit. You are quite right. None care about their conscience. They are always on guard with each other. And no one knows when they might be cheated by someone. Such a life is exhausting. How could our lives not be painful in such a corrupt and evil world? It's only logical. If we don't follow God and take the proper path, then we're susceptible to Satan's lies, to living in sin and being harmed to the point that we're neither like man nor ghost. Can there be peace or joy this way? Can there be any happiness? No way. Everyone is bad. There's no kindness at all. Living in this world is nothing but suffering. This is indeed true. All families have their own problems, and all people have their own pain. Hmm. If you stop and look around, what family lives in harmony? And who has a happy life? All families have their own problem. It's difficult and exhausting for everyone. If people followed God, pursued the truth, and took the right path in life, they'd certainly be blessed by God. And all of mankind would not be so corrupt, and people's lives wouldn't have so much pain. It is a pity that so few people truly believe in God, that so few people really love truth. The atheist, communist party that rules China oppresses churches and persecutes believers. In such a country that resists God, you'll find few of His blessings. That's why society in China is so dark and evil. And why our lives are grueling and painful. All of this is true. If God hadn't come to save mankind, we'd all live in the midst of sin, and none would be safe from the trickery and harm of Satan. Everything that you're saying is indeed true. People are hypocritical and seem friendly outside. In fact, they cheat and they use each other. There is tremendous truth in the saying, fair-weather friends, for that's how they are. When you have money and influence, everyone will fawn over you, but it all changes if you hit hard times. No one will stick with you. None will offer help. If someone has problems, others laugh at their expense. Just think about it. Back when I could lend money, friends and relatives would all fawn over me. But since I became seriously ill, they're all avoiding me. No one wants to help me. What pains me the most is even my husband, whom I lived with for more than 10 years, not only betrayed me, but he has actually seized the family property. <sighs> now I see it clearly. Relationships are based on self-interest, getting what they can. They're all devoid of feeling. They can't be relied on. What of marriage then? Or of love? It's all a trap, and it is hell. It's wonderful that we could communicate like this. Believing in God is the right path for humans. 
Without God's care and protection, life is just great suffering. Departing from God is no way to live. Hui Zhen, now you can see the darkness and evil of the human world. And you realize that belief in God is the right path. That's so wonderful. God saves those who follow His way and who truly believe in Him. You've undergone such ordeals. Now you can come to God and receive His salvation. This is wonderful. It's a true blessing in disguise. The way that you explained faith in God helped me open my heart. Mm. I've encountered such misfortune and have suffered so much. Only now am I able to understand why. It's getting late. Let's eat something and then continue our conversation. Yes. Okay. Why don't you rest? I'll make dinner. Auntie, you and Mom keep talking. We'll take care of it. Yeah, just you wait. I'm a real force in the oh, kitchen. Oh, okay. great. <laughs> Aunties, please have some mm, fruit. Thank you. Thanks. They're such good kids. Take things in stride. You'll get better more quickly. Wenya. Hmm? Did you notice it? Mom's in a really good mood today. I have. She's been smiling. Mm-hmm. It's been so long since we've seen her smiling. It's true. I'll help out too. Oh, Auntie. After hearing what you said today, my mom's spirits were really lifted. Thank God. I didn't get it till now. The reason people's lives are so painful is they don't believe in God and distance themselves from Him. Then they're harmed by Satan. Auntie, you understand a lot because of your belief in yes, God. Yes, belief in God is cool because you're able to understand tongues. Mm -hmm. Auntie, we'd love it if you tell us more about faith after we yeah. eat. Okay. Almighty God has uttered many truths and revealed many mysteries. He has clearly explained how we may gain God's blessings and what our proper path is. As long as we carefully read His words, we'll be able to grasp much of the truth. See? All that God has created is so beautiful. You really should come walk around. You're right. Going for a walk is so uplifting. Hearing your fellowship on Almighty God's words has helped me open up my heart. I used to believe all for themselves and the devil take the ends. Those who work with their minds govern those who work with their hands. Also, one's destiny is within one's own hand and money makes the world go round. All of these sayings are so true. The world really is like that. Money is power, and what's more, it allows people to live with dignity and happiness. That's why I would run myself into the ground to manage my business. I was obsessed with making money. I've wasted much of my life pursuing money. And now here I am. These satanic fallacies have done me such harm. Had I not read Almighty God's words, I'd been killed by Satan and never known what was going on. At last, I now understand. These fallacies, all from Satan, bring nothing but pain and darkness. It's true. Almighty God so clearly states the root of the evil and darkness of the world. Belief in God and reading His Word makes so much clear. The truth of Satan corrupting man is clear. But we can escape from this pain. That really is true. 
After several years of belief and reading his words, unknowingly I understood many truths. I could recognize Satan's lies and no longer placed emphasis on that world. Riches and fame, one status and career, they're not happiness. They do not bring any joy. I think that living for fame and status within the corrupt flesh brings great suffering. And that suffering brings with it great ills. You've got it right. That's just how it is. Mom! Auntie! Wenya! I brought us some water. I passed by a pavilion. Let's go there and sit. Here, I can push it. Okay. When one believes in God and one pursues the truth, when one lives by God's words and He's present in all aspects of one's life, only then can one be truly happy. I now believe in God with all my heart and I pursue the truth. I'm no longer troubled by worldly things like money, fame, or status. Even though I have less money and material comforts, God's truly with me and His words guide me. It brings me comfort. I have something to lean on and feel at ease, so I'm happy and joyful. No amount of money could ever buy that. It's no wonder you're so much happier now. I've never seen you like this. You're completely different. Belief in God really is wonderful. It is. Just think if we didn't believe in God and grasp the truth. All we knew was relying on our hard work struggling alone against fate. Then, even if we had money, status, or power, would it change our fate? We've all seen unbelievers who own lavish homes, who come from wealthy families and drive expensive cars, and yet they are not at ease. They are without peace and joy. None can escape the sense of emptiness and suffering. Many take drugs and ruin their lives. Some commit suicide. These are all known facts. Would you say, when the great disaster arrives, that money, fame, and status will save mankind? When the disaster comes, those with money, those with status, will die just like the rest. They will. Mm. Hey, during the Indian Ocean tsunami, people with money and power died just like everyone else. That's right. Those who believe in God are different. If we read God's words, we can grasp the truth and perceive His will. We can see many things clearly. We will know the type of person God blesses. We'll pursue the truth, put it into practice according to His words and do as He commends. That way we can gradually shun evil, cast off Satan's deception and shackles, and walk life's proper path. Once we gain truth through our faith in God, we can cast off sin and live by His words. And in the disaster, He'll protect us. No matter how great the disaster, we will not die. Huijan, don't you think this is the greatest blessing? It is. I now understand that only by belief in God can we gain God's protection, peace, and joy. Were we to pursue knowledge and wealth or great status and fame, but to do so, we departed from God then it would all be meaningless and empty. No matter how much knowledge someone has, it cannot change their fate or bring them happiness. Jingming, it's wonderful to grasp the truth. Hearing the words of Almighty God in fellowship, it's like opening up a window. It's brighter. I feel like I have something to lean on and I'm not as depressed. Almighty God expresses truth to save us from the harm of the devil Satan only this is true love. I accept Almighty God's work of the last days. I will read His words thoroughly and I will follow Him. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. Auntie, my mom has been so down in the dumps lately. She just sits alone and cries. Nothing we've said to her has seemed to help. It's been very upsetting for my sister and I to see her in such pain, and we've had no idea what to do. Since you've been sharing fellowship on Almighty God's words, my mom's mood has brightened so she's changed her life and follows Almighty God. It's just wonderful. Thank God. It seems Almighty God's words can truly change a person's heart. Yes. And resolve our difficulties and suffering. I will 
Believe in Almighty God as well, and I'll read his words, and I'll follow him. Mom, look! So that's how you wrapped it? It's not bad. Right, be encouraging. She's just learning. Here, try again. Okay. By the way, since when you must study for her college entrance exam, mm. and she cares for her dad, we have agreed that, for a little while, Sister Lee and her husband will help care for Wenya's dad. That way she can focus on studies, okay? Yes. This way you can find peace and not worry so much. I can't allow that. Everyone's busy spreading the gospel. It's too much. We can't impose on our brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters. We should love each other. And we should help out whoever is having difficulties. Yes. Right. Thank you, aunties. You don't need to thank, thank us. Thank God. Thank God. This is God's love for us. This is what God teaches, that we should help each other. In time, you will understand. Wenya. Wenya, you're back. Thank you for helping my dad. Thanks so much. It's no problem. Auntie, I've changed the water. Oh, that's great. Just put it there. Mm -hmm. If you're set, I'll clean the room now. Okay. Wow. Oh, Wenya, you're back. Yeah. Wenya. I can't believe how clean it is. Thank you, Auntie. Come now. Don't be so polite. There is no need. We're all from the house of God. Now here, give me your bag. It's okay. I you're can get it. You're still being too polite with me. There's no need. Here, you rest for a bit. We're going to sit and eat soon. These are herbs your Auntie Wong and I picked in the mountains a few days ago. I finished washing and drying them. They're really good for your mother's illness. Take them to her. Thank you, Auntie. You're welcome. Here, I'll put them in your bag. Every morning, you'll boil some water, then take a handful of herbs and slowly put them into the pot. Just let them steep there. Winya, how'd it go? Great, I'm all done. I'll do this. Okay. Dad, what's wrong? Dad! 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 Doctor! Nurse! Someone help! Dad! 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 Doctor! Dad! 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 Doctor! <laughs> There's no heartbeat. No heartbeat. Get ready for CPR. Okay.
Wenya, try not to be sad. In my heart, I know, Dad really loved you. Dad is gone now. What am I going to do? Wenya, I know your dad is gone, but your sister and I are here. We three have each other, mother and daughters. I know that life has been very difficult for you. We never were able to give you a home that was whole. When your dad and I divorced, you were sent to live with him. Your stepmother was unkind. She left your dad with no choice. He was forced to send you to stay with me. I was really confused back then. I only focused on my business. I didn't make time for you. I would send you to stay with relatives and friends. I had others care for you. Every time I would come to get you, I'd see you sitting all alone waiting for me to come and get you. You were like an orphan longing for a home. I felt such shame. Why was my life so difficult? Why couldn't... Why couldn't I have had a family that was whole? I failed at what was most important. I wasn't a good mother. I didn't take care of you. Now your poor father has passed away. I am very sick. And your sister isn't well. And you are still so young. You're not even an adult yet. But the burden of this family has fallen on your small shoulders. What can I do? I can't tell you how it pains me to see you suffer so much. I am so indebted to you, Wenya. Mom, now that we believe in God, we'll be fine. In God's house, I've come to know the love of brothers and sisters, the warmth of God's family. Were it not for faith in God, I wouldn't be able to go on. Since believing in God, we felt his love and the love of brothers and sisters. We finally see that only God is love and only God loves us. We must rely upon God. People can't be relied on. Mm. Oh God, you have saved me, given me love, and the warmth of a family. I will always believe in you and follow you. Oh God, you are truly my rock. My dad passed away. I'm depressed. Dear God, I beg you to guide me, to lead me on the path before me. Amen. Wenya. Wenya, Auntie Zhang is here to see us. Let's go. Mm. Let's pray together for her. Auntie. Hey, Wenya, come. Feeling any better? Yes, much. Wenya, you must properly grasp your father's passing. Where we come from and where we go, is all within God's rule. Everyone comes to earth with their individual mission. 
Once it's completed, then they will return. Do you understand this? If you really understand, you won't suffer as much. Things of the past are all done. Once we believe in God, we start to walk the proper path in life. If we really listen to God's words and obey His work, He'll certainly bless us. You need to know that God is with us now. The Church is our true family. We're no longer alone. No matter what we face, we can pray to God, and He will help us and guide us. Isn't that true? Let's read Almighty God's words together. Okay. From the moment you come crying into this world, you begin to perform your duty. You assume your role in the plan of God and in the ordination of God. You begin the journey of life. Whatever your background, and whatever the journey ahead of you. None can escape the orchestration and arrangement that heaven has in store, and none are in control of their destiny. For only he who rules over all things is capable of such work. Since the day man came into existence, God has been steady in his work, managing this universe and directing the change and movement of all things. Like all things, man quietly and unknowingly receives the nourishment of the sweetness and rain and dew from God. Like all things, man unknowingly lives under the orchestration of God's hand. Wenya? Mankind, who left the supply of life from the Almighty, does not know why they exist, and yet fears death. There is no support, no help, but mankind is still reluctant to close their eyes. Braving it all drags out an ignoble existence in this world in bodies without the consciousness of souls. You live like such with no hope. He exists like such with no aim. There is only the Holy One in the legend who will come to save those who moan in suffering and long desperately for His arrival. This belief cannot be realized so far in the people who are unconscious. However, the people still yearn for it so. The Almighty has mercy on these people who suffer deeply. At the same time, he is fed up with these people who have no consciousness because he has to wait too long for the answer from humans. He desires to seek, seek your heart and your spirit. He wants to bring you food and water and to awaken you so you're no longer thirsty, no longer hungry. When you're weary, and when you begin to feel the desolation of this world, do not be perplexed, do not cry. Almighty God, the Watcher, will embrace your arrival any time. He is watching by your side, waiting for you to turn back. He's waiting for the day your memory suddenly recovers, <laughs> becoming conscious of the fact that you came from God, you further realize that the Almighty has been watching there, awaiting your return all along. <laughs> he longs bitterly, waiting for a response without an answer. His watching is priceless and is for the heart and the spirit of humans. Perhaps this watching is indefinite, and perhaps this watching is at its end. But you should know 
exactly where your heart and spirit are now. Wenya, having read Almighty God's words, can you feel that it's God, the Lord of creation, speaking directly to all of us? God calls out to us with his words. He comforts us and he leads us. His words are indeed true. We are all children of God. He alone truly cares for us. The entirety of our lives is arranged by him. And no matter what befalls us or how we suffer, it's God training and perfecting us and guiding us through his words so we can accept truth and live by truth. We haven't believed in God for long, so we don't grasp much. But in a few years, we'll grasp more and have an understanding of God. Then we will know the significance of obeying God. Our family has suffered so very much, but none more than poor Wenya. From a young age, she was denied the warmth of a family. And now, her father has died. If she didn't believe in God, she would be suffering so very much. As her mother, I wouldn't know what to do. But thankfully, now that I believe and read Almighty God's words, I understand that all the pain and sorrow we suffer now is meant to help us to mature. I didn't understand before, and I railed against heaven and earth. How could I have been so foolish, so rebellious and obtuse? <sighs> Wenya, look, many children have grown up in very nice homes and have never had to suffer. But as a result, they understand little as adults. They're not able to live on their own. They're far too fragile. Then there are the kids who've known suffering. Once grown, they're really strong and resolved. They can live on their own. One thing I've learned is human life is full of ups and also downs. And we all come out of difficulties. Therefore, it's not a bad thing that we suffer. In fact, Bliss might cause harm. Wouldn't you say so? Auntie Jing and Mom say it well. Wenya, just think. If our family hadn't gone through such suffering, Mom wouldn't have thought to believe in God. The two of us definitely wouldn't believe. Don't you think this blessing has come from misfortune? Mm. Mom, Auntie, my heart's brighter from hearing your fellowship today. I know that these things I've suffered were all God's rule and arrangements. They'll actually benefit me. If my life had lacked suffering, I'm afraid I wouldn't believe in God, but would follow the world's evil trends like drinking or online gaming or going to karaoke bars. I now feel that all life suffered has actually been God's protection of me. He really loves us so much. I must do my best to believe and pursue truth. Are you aware of the burden you shoulder, your commission, and your responsibility? Where is your historic sense of mission? Is your task a heavy one? They are poor, pitiable, blind, and at a loss, wailing in the darkness. Where is the way? How they yearn for the light, like a shooting star, to suddenly descend 
and disperse the force of darkness that has oppressed men for so many years. Who can know just how anxiously they hope and how they pine day and night for this? These men who suffer deeply remain imprisoned in the dungeons of darkness without hope of release even on the day that the light flashes. When will they weep no longer? These fragile spirits who have never been granted rest are truly suffering such misfortune. They have long been sealed off by the ruthless ropes and the history that is frozen in place. Who has ever heard the sound of their wailing? Who has ever seen their miserable visage? Have you ever thought how grieved and anxious God's heart is? How can he bear to see the innocent mankind he created with his own hands suffering such torment? Have you forgotten that you are one of the victims? Out of your love for God, are you not willing to strive to save those who have survived? Are you not willing to use all your effort to repay the God who loves mankind like his own flesh and blood? Mom, you know, I think that our family truly is honored. You see, just when we fell into desperate circumstances, we unexpectedly heard God's voice and were lifted up before His throne. <laughs> it's truly God's grace. I've been feeling the joy of believing in God lately. It seems there will no longer be pain or sorrow. From now on, I'll enjoy peace and joy. I've been thinking, there must be many people out there living in pain and feeling alone like we used to. They haven't heard the voice of God yet, so they're still living in darkness with no path to take. I think that we have a duty to spread the gospel of the descent of the heavenly kingdom to them so they'll be able to return to the house of God and enjoy His love. That sounds great. We should spread the gospel to those in need who are suffering mm -hmm. and bring them in front of God. That would be in line with God's will. Mm -hmm. I often hear brothers and sisters say that there are many who long for God's appearance, but they are shackled by the deception of pastors and elders and the CCP government. They're unable to come before God. We've also seen that there are many people who are rushing around, locked in a futile struggle for worldly wealth fame and status. They are fooled and harmed by Satan, and they're living in pain. God's heart is sad and anxious. He's waiting for them to come in front of him as soon as possible and to escape from the harm of Satan. <sighs> Just think, when things were at their worst, God sent brothers and sisters to preach the gospel to us. Only then did we accept his work of the last days, escape from Satan's harm, and enjoy the blessings of believing in God. We should do all that we can to spread the gospel and fulfill our duty, so that those who live in darkness may hear the voice of God break through Satan's barriers and come before God so that they might be saved. This would repay God's love. Mm -hmm. Mom, I've wanted to spread the gospel and fulfill my duty for some time now. I'm just worried I don't understand the truth well enough and won't be able to explain it effectively. But when I hear brothers and sisters share their experience of being led by the Holy Spirit when spreading the gospel, I'm so moved. Thank God. I see that in our belief, God only blesses us when we perform our duty. Though we do not grasp much truth, we can still practice spreading the gospel with brothers and sisters. Then it will be easier to grasp truth and progress more quickly. Mm-hmm. Oh, Wenjing, tomorrow let's spread the gospel and bear witness with Auntie Cheng to family and friends. Yeah, great. Mom, what do you think? That's great. My sister's so good. You should start with her. You should share the gospel with her tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll do that tomorrow. Perfect.
Wen Jing, do you think you may have seen that red suitcase of mine? Um, look at the very top of the closet. Oh, thanks. Tiny soup. 